What is up Bertini fam now in today's video we're gonna be doing more suspension work now as many of you know everything on my channel is all about progression and I like testing different things out and so in today's video we're gonna be installing these H and R lowering springs they're a hundred percent made in Germany which is a hundred percent good for my Mini Cooper basically what the plan is gonna be today is to get off my factory springs weigh those things up because I'm also interested to seeing how much the factory springs weigh in comparison to the H&R lowering springs. I wanna look at things like diameter as well. And then of course, we're gonna install them on my Mini Cooper JCW. Now, it's not like the Mini Cooper is a super tall car from the factory, but it would be nice to lower this thing about an inch. And as you can see here on the rear, we have about an inch and three quarters before we're almost completely flush with the tire. So an inch and three quarters would put me at pretty much exactly flush with the top of the tire. And I would say to be safe, probably I would shoot for nothing more than an inch and a half, but of course, you know, lowering is all about preference. Now this is on the rear. Let's go ahead and check out the front. Now on the front, you have a little bit more of a gap. On the front, I have about two and a quarter inches that'll put me at the very top of the tire. So there's actually a little bit more of a gap here on the front. Now keep in mind, I lift my vehicle up, so this could probably be because I haven't yet um, compressed the spring back from the last time that I lifted the vehicle. So take these measurements with a grain of salt, but roughly we have about an inch space down that we can play with um, in order to make this really, really nice a fitment. But once again, ride height and these kind of things, it's all based on a person's aesthetics, what a person actually likes, a person's opinion of these things, because this can't be determined by like a one size fits all kind of scenario. Whatever size makes you happy is the size that you should go with. Really? Nothing. Now let me go ahead and open this up here so you can see what all you get and it's pretty much just the four springs. Well, obviously you got some nice stickers here. That's cool, it's gonna look good on the toolbox. Oh my gosh, and look at that Porsche. Freaking sick. Anyways, um, and then you have your springs here, right? You have your springs for the front, and then you have your springs for the rear. Hopefully I got that right. If not, I'm still gonna leave it in. I'm not gonna edit out. This way you all can see how big of a dummy I am sometimes. And as you see here, 100% made in Germany. By the way, whenever you're picking these springs up, it's very important that you go with a reputable dealer because there are and have been in the past copies, so fakes of these out there existing in the world. So you wanna make sure that you go with a reputable dealer who you know is connected with H&R Springs. This way you don't end up with a bunch of fakes and end up with what could be catastrophic damage while you're driving your vehicle. Now I am interested to get the weight on these springs because I know that factory springs can sometimes be super, super heavy. And so I wanna see how these compare to the factory springs. Now, if you have not yet joined the Bertini family, go ahead, click that subscribe button and the notification bell. This way you're notified every single time I put out a new video. Now I do put out weekly videos, so every single week you could be expecting a video from me. And if for whatever reason I don't put out a video, there might be a small possibility I was kidnapped. Or I could have just been out of town or traveling or yeah, a few other things. Anyways, with that being said, go ahead and roll the intro. Go ahead and turn on the scale here and get in uh, pounds and ounces. Perfect. All right. And so I guess we'll start off with the rear. So the rear spring weight is three pounds and seven ounces. And the front spring weight is three pounds, five ounces. So that basically means that the total combined rear weight would be six pounds, 14 ounces for these two springs together. And it would be six pounds and 10 ounces for the two front springs, which brings the grand total weight to 13 pounds, eight ounces for the H&R springs. Now let's go ahead and check the thickness on these things. So 11.40 millimeters and it keeps changing. So that's the measurement we'll go with is 11.40. Let's check one more spot just to see. 11.30, actually we'll go with 11.30 millimeters um, is the thickness on this thing. 
Yep, 11.30. So 11.30 on the front. And then on the rear, it's a little bit thicker here. We have 12.91 or 12.90. Let's check another spot to see. So let's turn at that angle. Yeah, 12, 12.91, 12 12.92. 12 point, not 96. 12.90 is the number that we'll go with in terms of the thickness on the rear shock or the rear spring, not the rear shock, the rear spring. Now it's time for the fun part. Let's go ahead and get these factory springs off and get the new springs from H&R on the Mini Cooper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start off on the rear just because the rear is a lot more simplistic than the fronts are. And so we'll go ahead and start here and then we'll work our way to the front. All right, so we are definitely going to have to remove all the rust from this bolt because there ain't no way I'm putting this bolt back in there looking like this. And just as promised, I cleaned up a bunch of rust off of this nut. Eventually I'll probably replace it, but for now it'll do and looks pretty good. Okay, so something I wanna show you here really quickly is the height difference between the two of these and also obviously the way that they're coiled. So keeping in mind, this has been now on my Mini Cooper for 23,000 miles, this spring right here. And this spring is still lower. And the reason why I mentioned the amount of miles is because this spring over time is going to slightly go down just a little bit more than what it's at right now. Not a dramatic difference, but over time it is gonna go down slightly more. And so. You wanna consider that when you're getting springs, you don't wanna go for too crazy of a factory drop, or not a factory drop, but an aftermarket drop, because they do lose, um, I don't wanna say their springiness, but, but they do shorten slightly over time, as you can see here with the factory spring. Let me get these in the same position, um, this so you can see here. But um, it's, I would say it's about a quarter of an inch um, at this point right now, uh, taller than this spring, but like I said, it's not it's not compressed. And in terms of the diameter and thickness, they look exactly alike, but I'll go ahead and measure up the thickness here as well. Okay, now if you remember, our thickness on the H&R spring was 11.30 millimeters. Let's go ahead and check out that of the H&R spring, 10.88, and the H&R spring is uh, 11.30, so there is a bit of a difference there. Let's just call this one 1090, and this one is 11.30, so the H&R spring is thicker than that of the factory coil. All right, let's go ahead and weigh up the rear springs now that we have them off. So two pounds and two ounces, so that means multiply that by two, that's four pounds, four ounces, which basically means that we're saving almost a pound by removing the factory springs off of the rear. So the H&R ones are actually a, almost a pound lighter than that of the factory springs. All right, well now the driver's side rear is done. Let's go ahead and move on to the driver's side passenger and install that spring. And then of course, all I'm gonna do is repeat the exact same process I did on this side and I'm gonna do it on the exact same, or not the exact same side, I'm gonna do the exact same process on that side. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but this bolt needs to be tightened down to 121 foot pounds. So the passenger side rear is done, and let me tell you something, the rear was super, super easy, but now I'm kind of worried. Now I'm trying to, trying to rethink, should I have done the rears first, or should I have started with the fronts? Because that was so easy sailing that now any little bit of pushback on the fronts, it's probably gonna be a lot more emotional stress. I'm just kidding, let's go ahead and do the fronts now. Now that we got the front wheel off, I'm gonna go ahead and start removing these things. I'm gonna start over here um, and then work my way around, um, get the sway bar off, of course. Well, that's what that is. Um, but get the sway bar off, of course, and then there's a pinch bolt over here that I need to remove and um, right back here and then a few bolts on top and we'll be good to go. All 
Okay, so we finally got the front shock out. As you can see there, it is completely removed. Um, but I did have to bring in Miguel into the picture to help out with this. So what's up, man? What's up? You came in to save the day. Yeah, appreciate you. Um, so you're definitely gonna need a second person to come in and help out with this um, because this is definitely not, at least this portion of it, it's not a one portion or one person job. Um, Miguel had to stand on this. I was like fidgeting around with stuff. Um, we eventually got it out. We kind of tilted it back towards us and then got it out. So um, that was the trick. Once we got it high enough, we pulled it this way and then, uh, yeah, that got it out. Anyways, now we'll go ahead and get the new spring on this one. We need to compress this with our compressor tool. Um, get the new spring on this one and then repeat the exact same process on the other side. All right, and now for the fun slash not so fun part, which is to coil down these springs using a spring compressor and then removing this top piece over here super carefully. I'm not gonna stand over it just in case anything happens. It'll go flying through my roof and I won't die. So I just thought about this and I figured I wanted to show you this because it's something that I would wanna see if I was looking up a video like this. But this is the setup that I have, okay? And so these two are 180 degrees away from each other and um, this is where I'm gonna compress from is these two over here. That is the safest point that I found on here that I feel comfortable compressing at. And by the way, this is from this point on gonna be done by hand. So this hasn't been like super tightened down yet. Um, and then from here on out, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this by hand, meaning I'm gonna use a wrench and wrench these things together to compress a spring. And then I'll go ahead and at, at the very top, I'll go ahead and remove this one. I believe it's an 18 millimeter. I could be wrong. Nope. I'm not wrong, it's an 18 millimeter. Some of you might also be curious, like how do you know when? So right now the spring is compressed here and as you can see, I have a little bit of a gap on both sides. They're equally tightened down. This top hat is now movable, okay? So now it's gonna be where it's safe to do without this thing turning into a freaking spring bomb. I said spring bomb, not a spring bomb, a spring bomb. Anyways, let's go ahead and remove this top cap. Something that's also really important is to make sure you remember where everything is at. Now on these boots, you have like where things are lined up before you take them off. So these things can only go back in one direction, but make sure you're paying attention and take your time and don't rush this part because what would suck is you, you put this all back together and it's all done incorrectly and then you gotta take everything back off, so. Take your time, be patient, players. If you're doing the same springs that I have here, which are the H&R um, lowering springs, these need to be facing upward. So remember H&R stuff, and this is with most brands, the writing is gonna be facing up always. So finally, we got one down, completely done. Everything is torqued down to spec. Everything is where it needs to be. Everything looks really good. Now we just gotta go ahead and get it back on the car. Well, as you can see in here, I just finished installing everything back into the Mini Cooper. Now all we have to do is repeat the exact same steps that we did on this side, on the other side, and then of course, let's go ahead and take it out on the road. That's what I'm most excited about, to see how this thing actually performs. And just like that, side number two is also finished, so the passenger side is done. I just realized something because when I was looking online, it was really difficult for me to find the torque specs for all these different things, so I went ahead and made a purchase of something and got some torque specs for you all who are interested in doing this for yourselves. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is really quickly, I'll go ahead and uh, display that on the screen now. This way, you can go ahead and pause at any moment in time as I'm speaking. Um, and stop wherever there is something that you need more information on um, in terms of how to remove all of this stuff um, as well as meaning like proper procedure, things to check for, um, like where or how far in this thing needs to sit, the strut needs to sit. Um, but I'll also go ahead and list the torque specs as well for all of these different pieces. This way you're tightening down everything properly and you're not risking stripping or breaking a bolt. Now with all this out the way, let's go ahead and get this wheel on and get it onto the road. I wanna test ride it. Um, I wanna see how the difference in ride height compares 
um, to what it was in the factory, measure it out. Obviously, there's gonna be some more um, sagging over time, but most importantly, I do wanna see how this thing handles now. All right, now let's measure up the thickness of the front springs. And if you remember, the H&R springs were 11.30 millimeters. Okay, so the front springs here look to be thicker. These are at 13 millimeters in thickness. Uh, exactly, yeah, 13 is where we had, yeah. Yeah, roughly 13 millimeters um, in thickness. I just pulled 1307, but give or take a few, obviously, on any of these measurements, but yeah, 13 millimeters. So it looks like the front on the factory ones are actually thicker than that of the, um, the H&R springs. Now let's go ahead and check the weight on these things. Okay, so three pounds, six ounces, that means total times two, that's six pounds, 12 ounces, which gives us a combined weight of 15 pounds, four ounces, which means that going to the H&R springs, we roughly shaved off about two pounds. That's really good. So initial impression, <laughs> let me tell you something. I don't know how this thing is gonna handle, and to be frank, I almost don't even care about the handling performance. Those H&R springs is the perfect, perfect, in my opinion, of course, perfect drop height or ride height, whatever you wanna call it, for the Mini Cooper JCW platform. That thing looks absolutely flawless. If I had wheel spacers on right now, like the setup would be so mint, so flush. I mean, it looks so mint and so flush right now. <laughs> so needless to say, I am super happy with how this thing looks, but what we're gonna go ahead and do, let's go ahead, I have the tape measure here. We'll go ahead and measure the rear drop height of what we actually ended up with, as well as the front drop height too. Now, if you remember, the factory rear was an inch and three fourths from here to the top of the tire, and now we are at one inch. <laughs> one inch from the tire, maybe even um, an inch and a quarter taking it down to about a half an inch. I'm trying to factor in if this thing was actually spread out here, um, but that is a hell of a drop. It's probably gonna drop about a quarter though, because if that's what it's at right now, it's probably going to sag over time about a quarter of an inch, which would make it even, I mean, just absolutely stunning. Now in the front, we had a bigger gap that was at two inches and a quarter, and now we are at one and a quarter, so an inch and a quarter is what we're at now. And like I said, this is probably gonna drop over time um, about a quarter of an inch. So factoring that in, I mean, this thing is perfect. So final measurement, one inch and a quarter. Now that we know this thing looks absolutely stunning, let's go ahead and take it out on the road, see how it actually performs, how it actually handles, because like I said, it looks really good, but now it's to see how it handles. We did shave two pounds, yeah. Yeah, we shaved two pounds, roughly two pounds of weight by doing this. Um, but if you remember when we added the underbody braces because we didn't already have a front underbody brace, we did add, I think, a few ounces there. Um, and so this is kind of like neutralizing if you, if you would say like net neutral in terms of weight difference. But uh, yeah, the look on this thing looks really good. Anyways, I wanna go and see how it handles now because obviously we've lowered the center of gravity. This is what the Mini Cooper should have came with from the factory. This thing looks good. Not that they're super high anyways from the factory, but still. Well, enough talking. Let's go ahead and take this thing out on the road. Let me start off by saying that it has been super challenging to get out here and capture any footage in the Mini just because of the weather conditions here. Um, it's been raining on and off, and so obviously that presents a challenge with getting in the car and actually doing some riding footage. Let's see if I go, oh, perfect. Well, um, so far, all of the bumps, like road bumps or like the bumps in the road, um, like uh, the street stops, the things that stop you, uh, slow you down for like 15 mile per hour roads, I'm able to clear those with no problem. Um, and I'm sure some of you want to know that some of you who live in communities or live nearby communities that have those speed bumps or speed humps in the road um, It's good knowing that you're not gonna like scrape or anything and look I have a full three inch exhaust system. I have the MMR underbody braces and still nothing whatsoever No scraping now for what everybody wants to know right in terms of handling am I noticing a dramatic improvement 
in the handling of the Mini. So, turn in at turn in, you do notice that you can take it at a little bit higher of a speed than you could do previously. Um, and obviously I'm assuming it's because we've lowered the center of gravity, even if by only an inch. So you definitely notice that aspect, but I will say this, because I know some of you probably want to know in comparison to other parts, like where does this modification rate in terms of the handling performance in comparison to other things that I've did. So do I notice as dramatic as an increase in the terms of the handling of the vehicle as let's say the MMR performance underbody chassis braces? Not even remotely close. And I know that's not what some of you want to hear, especially because some of you want to lower your Mini Cooper for aesthetic reasons, and I get it. That's also me. But I wouldn't rate this modification as something as like, you're gonna get in the Mini Cooper and all of a sudden dramatically it's gonna handle super different. For me, that was the MMR performance under body braces. Now, I don't know if this is a placebo thing, but I feel closer to the ground now. Um, and I don't know if it's because I know that obviously I lowered the Mini Cooper and so I'm gonna be closer <laughs> to the ground. Um, but I almost feel that way. Now something, the way that I ride in my Mini Cooper, the way that I drive my Mini Cooper, is I actually like to lower my seating position so that I feel closer to the ground. So like my door height, I'm actually, I promise you, not a really short person, I'm six feet tall. And I put my the top of my door sill at my shoulder. So I pretty much lower my seating all the way down. Oh, I got to slow down here because we have um, the sand hill crossings and we have these like, I don't know what kind of bird these things are, but um, because I live out in uh, swampland kind of areas or out in the country, um, all the wildlife here takes, um, they have seniority or takes precedent over us which is all good. It takes nothing more than, than a second to, to stop for them. But yeah, like I was saying, um, I like that feeling of sitting lower, getting that Mini Cooper, true go-kart feeling. Um, and so maybe the inch, inch and a quarter, whatever it lowered, the actual lower of what it did, um, the actual lowering, it makes me feel like I am sitting closer to the ground. Um, here's a turn coming up here. Let me take this. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, see, this is a challenge because I definitely feel more planted. Like the vehicle does feel like it's it's sitting, it's more planted, um, but the handling is not the same kind of like dramatic improvement that I felt when I put in the chassis braces. Um, like that was a night and day difference for me. Um, I think I went from being able to take this like one specific turn um, in Mexico, of course. Uh, I used to take it at like 55, 56 um, with like not a very confidence inspiring um, turn and angle, especially like when hitting the apex. Um, but after those chassis braces were installed, it was like, I mean, it was like night and day. I went from that same like 56, 57 um, in that ballpark area to like 73 all the way up to 79. Um, so pretty dramatic differences on that particular turn. And that was with the chassis braces. But like, if the question is like, was the springs, the lowering springs from H&R a good investment? For me, yes, because for me, it adds the H&R springs or lowering springs in general adds to the sex appeal of the Mini Cooper, and yes, I said sex appeal because there is a lot of sex appeal with Mini Coopers. And I know especially some of the guys out there are like, yeah, macho, Mini Coopers are macho and tough, and women like the tough guy stuff. And I'm like, actually, you'd be surprised in the Mini community, um, from what I hear from all of the women in the Mini community, they love when they see dudes with Mini Coopers because it shows like, I guess to them, it's not like, uh, like an egocentric male, or, you know, it shows that the dude is like confidence in himself and that like he just likes what he likes and he's not trying to like impress anybody with his machoisms. And then on the flip side, I think like guys, when they see women in Mini Coopers, now obviously I can't speak 
Well, I can because I love when my wife gets in the Mini Cooper. My wife's favorite car is actually a Mini Cooper, um, funny enough. So that's why we plan on adding a bunch more Mini Coopers to the family. When I speak to guys about it, guys love when they see women in Mini Coopers too. So I think it could go both ways. By the way, on a completely different note, the ride it feels so much more smoother than the stock springs. I'm not sure why, I don't understand the physics behind it, but it feels a lot, a lot smoother, a lot more comfortable with the H&R Performance Springs than it did with the stock factory springs. It's always funny when people see me GoProing around town, they're like, hmm, what's going on? And the area that I live in could be a little bit bougie. And so um, people can be very like suspicious of the GoPro. By the way, I know I installed H&R Springs in this video, but if you're interested, MMR Performance makes the exact same spring setup to that of the H&R Springs. And if you use my discount, you'll save a bunch of money. So I'm not saying to go with them because I didn't install them on my Mini Cooper because I had already had uh, springs that were sent to me from H&R to obviously test out and get my feedback and review on them. But from what I've heard, MMR Performance makes some really good springs and based on the other parts that I've installed from them on my Mini Cooper, chances are those springs are probably gonna be really good too. And like I've said a bunch of times before, if you use code Bertini, you'll save a bunch of money on those springs. So, might be worth checking out and you're gonna lower the ride height the exact same distance as the H&R springs that I put on my Mini Cooper. Well, that's all I have for today's video. Remember, if you're interested in purchasing the springs that I installed in today's video, I'll have links in the description box below. Use code Bertini and you'll save yourself a bunch of money. Make sure if you have not yet joined the Bertini family, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. This way you can be notified every single time I put out a new video, which I put out new videos weekly. Most importantly, above everything else I discussed in this video, make sure you're putting out good energy into the world and you're paying it forward. I'll check y'all out later. Bye now.